Uh, my name is Mike Parody. I'm the wireless sales manager for Dynastream Innovations. And there are two use cases being determined as the key use cases for low power and ultra low power radio communication. One is the low power LAN that we see uh, described in the demonstration we have here. The use case is a elderly patient uh, coming home or deciding to live at home or an assisted uh, living facility and access to um, their movements and alarm points by the outside world, whether it be a caregiver, uh, a grandson or granddaughter or son or daughter, uh, or um, an official of the healthcare facility. So what we've chosen is we've chosen our standard <coughs> ANT product, um, a ANT module which is in our ANT AT uh, DKT3 uh, dev kit. Uh, it's a little um, 20 mil by 20 mil module and it's using a uh, product built onto it called Sensor Core. Uh, there is no actual applications processor running any of this. Um, the topology, as you see, is above with a hub and then a group of sensors strewn about in clusters. So those clusters will re um, be relating to specific rooms that we have in the house. The hub will be the PC that we have uh, running with one of our anti-USB sticks. So if we can focus down at the, uh, the layout of the house, uh, we've done a pretty uh, good job of trying to depict uh, a living room, a bedroom, uh, a kitchen, and, and, a, and a, be a bathroom. And as you can see, on the clusters, we have a group in the kitchen, we have a group in the bathroom, we have a group in the bedroom, and a group in the living room. And in between the hub and these clusters, we have relays. Quite often, the problem in a housing environment is the distance between the hub and the inexpensive ultra-low power sensors on the outside rim. Uh, we use a relay functionality, which is a simple process of what goes in, comes out. So simple messages, alarm messages, position messages, continual messages like temperature, um, all those messages are relayed through the various different relays for each of the clusters. So we'll walk through the whole house room by room. We'll start with the kitchen. This is a gas sensor that we have taken just a simple potentiometer and put an analog signal into our sensor core. And we can see on the display the analog reading associated with the voltage drop across the potentiometer. And as we increment it up, we get to a point where we've decided there's too much gas in the room and we have an alarm that comes out of the main, main uh, uh, control panel. You can see the graphical indication of the alarm there. So that was one part of the use case. So Grandma had left the stove on but forgot to light it and there's a fire hazard. The next would be turning the stove on and off. So we have a little green light on the display up onto there, and as I turn the stove on, the green light comes on. So that's a good indication that at some time during the night, perhaps she got up at a time she shouldn't be up at and decided to make a cup of tea. But let's just say she decided that she was going to start the cup of tea and then go out for a walk, which was a very hazardous event. We've linked it to the opening of the front door. Now you can see the front door is open and the stove is on, alarm goes off. Very simple, easy to use devices created out of standard off-the-shelf products, creating a very complex uh, network with mesh and relay capability. Another part of the kitchen was the number of times the fridge door is open. As you can see, the counter on the fridge door will increment and decrement or as we open the door. That's important to judge behavior. Okay, so we'll move to the bathroom, where the bathroom is uh, a similar uh, frequency counter that's built onto the toilet. So they want to know when grandma has got up in the middle of the night and whether or not she's used the toilet or not. So we can see the counter on the toilet, on the display, move up as we have more opens and closes of the lids. We have a fall sensor in the bathroom. So grandma's fallen from the tub and an alarm goes off. Very simple. We'll try that again just to make sure that we see the reaction. The alarm goes off, grandma's fallen. Okay, so that's the bathroom that's been covered. 
We'll move on now to the bedroom where we have a few devices. We have a temperature sensor that's being uh, relayed um, continuously. So you'll see on the display we have about 21 degrees Celsius. That's a great uh, indication that um, grandma hasn't left the, uh, the door open or the window open, uh, that everything is operational in her house. This is a off-the-shelf motion sensor product that we've incorporated through into our ant module internally and the application is when there's motion in front, in other words, grandma has uh, risen from her bed and is moving throughout the room, it turns on the lights for them. So you can see the motion indicates um, with the red light on here that it's been received and at the same time the network turns on the light using our simple ant modules. Uh, we have a door open and close sensor. As you can see, the door is closed now in the green position on the screen. And we move the magnet away and the door is open. So that will be a good indication um, at your application that grandma's left the room. I'll explain in a little bit more detail the topology of the network that, of the demonstration you just saw. We have the hub. That would typically be your control panel that's maybe close to your front door or your back door, the entry access point. Uh, in our case, we use the PC and an Ant uh, USB uh, one uh, USB dongle. And we have a cluster of bathroom sensors and uh, bedroom sensors, the living room sensor, and a cluster of kitchen sensors, all operating through relays. See the relay bath, relay bed, relay kitchen. In this case, the hub is listening for a different uh, number to be transmitted from the frequency uh, counter on the fridge. So every time the door opens, that number would change and increment by one. In the case of the gas sensor, it's looking for an analog signal, a voltage that's coming from the potentiometer. And in the case of the, uh, the fridge, uh, or not the fridge door, but the, um, the stove, we would have an on-off switch, basically. And any signal that's coming through is relayed through here and passed through from channel one to, or channel zero to channel one into the hub. And the hub does whatever it needs to do with that information, and that's up to the application. And then it decides what it's going to do with the siren or any of the other uh, alarms that it needs to do. Same thing happens in the bathroom. You have a signal from the motion detector or the fall detector. When the motion detector goes on, the information goes through the relay in the bathroom to the hub, and the hub sends a signal back through the relay to the light to turn on because there's motion in the room. And the frequency counter for the toilet, again, is just an incremental signal. We have a similar kind of situation where we have a motion detector in the bedroom, and we have a contact on the door. That signal, again, is routed back through the uh, relay into the hub. We have a motion detector there, a signal is sent out to the light here, and the light turns on. Again, this is all running on coin cell batteries, all using our off-the-shelf uh, AT3 modules, uh, using Sensor Core, which is an application that's programmed, allowing digital and analog inputs to be uh, assumed in through the microprocessor. Um, the bill of materials is estimated for each of these the hub and the sensors and the relays to be less than four dollars. So we feel this is a viable alternative to the much more complex and much more costly um, home automation technologies that are out there. Uh, we hope that you'll take a serious look at Ant as the solution for the low power land. Thanks for your time.